I'm joined now by Haji Abdul Rahman Kasim, who is one of the independent directors on the board of Bank Rakiat. Uh, now, you've just won the award for Best Managed Bank in Malaysia. Congratulations. Uh, could you tell me what that means not only to the senior management but also the employees of the bank? We currently we are about 21 percent I would say mm -hmm. that's the command of the market share mm -hmm. in the banking system in Malaysia. Okay now uh, the, the bank transformed itself uh, I understand from being a conventional bank to a Sharia bank in 2002. What were the factors that actually triggered that, that change? No, it's driven by uh, the Islamic Banking Act, which was enacted in Parliament in Malaysia back in 1983. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw, uh, we saw an opportune moment sometime in 1993 when we, uh, we have a window, and since then, there is no looking back. Yeah? 2002, we convert everything, including our assets, into fully Sharia compliance. Are there any plans to expand now your services to other Islamic countries? Uh, and, and if so, which ones? Certainly, God willing, inshallah, we, we would like to, because in Malaysia we have been around for the last 60 years, mm -hmm. and uh, naturally we would like to step out of our country and, then, and carry on with our transformation journey to expand the business. Are there any particular countries you'd like to aim for? I think tremendous potential yeah, worldwide, and I'm glad uh, in this conference, yeah, uh, meet a lot of people, especially from Europe, yeah, mm. yeah, and uh, the UK, they, they, co they were in our country, they colonized us back, so we are very familiar with them, yeah, <laughs> so when you are familiar, there yeah, yeah. tendency for us to be, to, to come to this side, but of course we like to start in Southeast Asia, people who are nearer to our shores. Changing tack slightly now, what are your thoughts on the growing influence of Islamic banking around the world? And what factors do you think have made this possible? Okay, maybe I change your question slightly. I think, mm. I think it's more, not influence, it's more of popularity. Okay. Yeah, popularity. Now, the Muslims, yeah, the Muslims, they were, in the Middle East, they were, the, they were, they were a lot of unbanked money I would say mm. yeah they were looking for they were looking for um, in line with their faith yeah they would like to put the money in line with their faith free of riba free of free of kara free of mesa yeah, these are three principles yeah of Islam and um, so they were looking for that yeah and also I think it's driven also by the customers needs not only among the Muslim, but also among the non-Muslim, because non-Muslim also have ethical values, social responsibility, investment. So they also would like to look for avenues to put the money in the right place. Yeah. So I uh, I must say that uh, Islamic banking, Islamic Islamic finance, provide that avenue. Yeah, in line with in line with ethical values for the non-Muslim, for the Muslim is more of the of their faith. Mm. And also I think in a conventional bank, there are a lot of them now, they also have them, their banking units, Islamic banking units, because they are giving opportunity yeah. to their customers to make sure they protect their market share. And what are the, the, the main attractions to customers to using an Islamic banking system? I think to the Muslim especially, this mm. is faith. Yeah. Yeah? They, they don't compromise on that one. Mm. Yeah. To the non -Muslim, to the non Muslim is more of the ethical values. Yeah. At, yeah. And also they would like to see uh, uh, a variety. A variety mm. in the banks on something that uh, close enough to their heart. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, James, it was in line with social responsibility investment. Mm. In line with the environment, yeah, because Muslims are also would love Environment is sustained. Yeah, I think likewise in the finance and finance and banking circle, the same principle apply. Yeah. What steps do you think that uh, Islamic banking needs to do to bring it on par with conventional banking? Right now, um, traditionally for uh, fifty, we are just. I think Islamic bank is just uh, 
more, slightly more than 50 years as compared to conventional bank more than 500 years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's a, a lot of catching up, I must say. So we kickstart with Islamifying certain right. things, yeah, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the bank. And, uh, but I must say that uh, regulations are very important, international standards are very important, so that people are sure they can something they can trust, something they, uh, they are comfortable with, mm-hmm. and uh, especially when it comes to international standards in Islamic finance, finance is harmonizing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, people get very uncomfortable with games when they, they, do, they do with something that they're not sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially the moment you mentioned the word Islamic bank and the, for a non-Muslim, whew, yeah. to a German, to a French. Whew. But actually, it's, it's just more of educating them. Mm. I think there's a need also for more and more of scholars. We need Islamic scholars to come and, uh, and uh, uh, to come up from here. Yeah, more and more, and as mentioned by the by the speakers in the early session, in the opening session, we need more of this in the universities. We chain up more Islamic scholars to help to, uh, to 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 come into the Islamic finance and smooth the process. Yeah. And. One final question, if I may. Uh, Bank Rakiat has been both a conventional bank and is now a Sharia bank. Do you think that offers you an advantage over other Sharia banks? College, if you like. Certainly, James. We, we, I would say that we have a, a head start on this. Yeah, and um, it was back in the 1993 when we opened a bank. When the, the window opened, yeah. So we, we are poised, ready to grow, and uh, supported, by, supported by more than 5,000 employees, fully committed, yeah. And uh, I'm sure that we, this, is, this is the area that we certainly will be ahead of, ahead of our competitors. In life, there's always competition outside there. We like to stay ahead, yeah, and uh, God willing, inshallah, yeah, we'll be certainly doing better than the rest of the banks. You are the award winners for the best managed bank in Malaysia. How do your bosses, how do your uh, chairman, managing director, and the rest of the company feel about that award? We were, we were very, very excited about it. Yeah, We thank God for this uh, for this gift, yeah, and uh, everybody back home is encouraged, very encouraged, and um, certain things we're doing is right, but I'm sure there are many other things can we can put right with the support of the Malaysian government, mm-hmm. yeah, and Bank Nagara as our regulator, and I'm sure, yeah, this is some, this is uh, this is one more accolade on our shoulder, will take us through to our transformation journey. Congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Kasim, Director of the Board at Bank Rakia, thank you very much indeed for your time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.